Hey guys, and welcome again to Chris's GTI. Uh, it's Tuesday, beautiful Tuesday, middle of October, 76 degrees. Awesome, awesome day. Let's get the windows up here. This is just going to be a quick video, just making a quick run to the post office. Uh, but I want to explain where my obsession for cars came from. Uh, long story short, it actually came from my dad. My dad is, was a big uh, car fanatic. He's had, let's see, the earliest car that I could remember that my father getting was, I have no idea what year it is, uh, but it was an MG. MGBT? Oh, I'll have to look that up. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but it was a, um, it, it was a, uh, a hatch, kind of like a hatchback version of the MG. It was, it was two-tone. Remember two-tone? You don't see a lot of two-tones around much anymore. It was, it was black and silver. I think it had a black leather interior. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I specifically remember the way that it smelled. It smelled... Uh, I like the smell. It was a, it was an old leather sports car, British kind of sports car smell. I, I can't explain. Every now and then, I jump into older cars with, with a lot of leather around it, and and it smells that way, and it, it gives me, it gives me flashbacks to this car. The next one probably that I can remember is, uh is a Austin Healey Bug Eye Sprite. It was maroon. I don't think it was uh, like a maroon burgundy. I don't think it was the original um, the original color of the car. Um, and that one I think had like brown leather interior. I wish I had pictures of these. I think I may I may plop in a couple stock pictures of these actual cars so so you can see it in this video, but I don't have actual pictures of these cars. I remember seeing actual pictures somewhere, but in the years they've just they've just gone away. Um, the next one that I can remember was really uh, we're fast forwarding a bit here because we really you know Dad got a few sports cars in our lives when we were real young, but really couldn't afford much. So we're kind of fast forwarding here to like the mid '80s when my unfortunately my parents got divorced, and um, they got uh, you know Dad took one of the cars, one of the two cars. We had two cars. We had like one of the first generation. Nissan Sentras my mom had that came into the United States. Uh, so she had that and dad had a 83, uh, an 80, like an 83 black rabbit, Volkswagen rabbit. And my brother and I would actually see my dad every weekend. And I remember one weekend he came around in a brand new 1985 uh, Mark II uh, Volkswagen GTI. Uh, silver with the um, you know with, with the, the cloth plaid interior actually actually in 85 I think it was more of like a like a fun, funky 80s pattern instead of the instead of like what I have here uh, the, 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 the typical plaid pattern but uh, that was a lot of fun that was I'm not sure yeah, I don't remember Dad actually having a brand new car in, in my life. I don't remember us having a brand new car off the dealership. Fund. And only a few months after that, and this was a big surprise, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't let us know. Um, he 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 bought his first real toy, which was at the time. And again, we're talking about '86, 1986. It was a 1969 Porsche 911S. Um, forgot the name of the color. It's a very unique blue. It's kind of like a deeper blue, but not really navy. Uh, with the, and I think it's called Fuchs wheels. F U C H. I'll have to look that up. Uh, this is just off the top of my head. Um, uh, and it, that was that was really really surprising. And that is really what both that GTI and the in the in the 911 
is really what made me fall in love with German cars and why the majority of the cars that I've had in my life have been German cars. Love them, uh, they, j just the way that they handle, they're so tight, even a 1969 Porsche 911, which I don't remember how many miles I had on it uh, when Dad bought it, but back then, I mean, we're talking mid-80s, he, uh, I mean, he, if I remember, he probably paid like $13,000 for it. Now, the late 60s, early 70s, well, hell, any air-cooled 911 now, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars is ridiculous in the past seven or eight years how quickly air-cooled 911s have just, have just accelerated in, in price. It's actually kind of ridiculous, but... Uh, but anyway, so he had that for for a few years, but his dad's main passion was uh, was Corvettes. Uh, he had a friend of his who he helped who he helped show a Corvette. Um, his friend was named his friend is name was named Mike. Uh, he had a, a 1985 at the time uh, at the time mid 80s. He had a 1958 uh, Corvette. Uh, fully, fully restored, ground up, beautiful, beautiful car. We went to so many car shows with him. It was trailered, and um, the cop is coming up here. So, okay. So it was trailered. We went to so many cool shows. A couple of years in a row, we went to. Um, we even brought it all the way down. And now we were living in New Hampshire at the time. We brought it all the way down to uh, to Boston World of Wheels. I mean, that was cool. That was the very first time I saw my first Lamborghini. It was a Countach, which was standing, which was set up uh, eight feet from us across the aisle, and I just stared at that for three days during those during that convention while we were there with my dad, helping my dad's friend, um, helping my dad's friend show the car. So, so anyway, to so get back to this. To get back to the, uh, his first Corvette that he got was a 1965 uh, Stingray convertible, blue. I don't think the blue wasn't the original color. Silver was the original color. Blue with a black leather interior. Um, absolutely gorgeous car. Side pipes. I'll try and get a picture here, but um, uh, that was his first Corvette, fully restored numbers matching it was it was awesome pulling into the house now here to actually eat lunch so I'm gonna have to part two will be coming up next hold on okay I'm back let's see so that was the 65 Corvette that my dad had now that one was was a lot of fun because we we took it ourselves to a lot of shows um, and, and the blue was actually unique. Unique Again, I don't think it was uh, an original color. So even though the, the body numbers match and the engine match, but it wasn't the original color, it was a silver. So after that, he traded, uh, went up to a, I think it was a 66 Stingray convertible again. Um, uh, I think this one was, uh, if I remember it, this one was silver this time with a black top. Uh, beautiful car. Again, they were they were fully uh, restored. Uh, absolutely beautiful cars. And then a uh, and then from that he went to a, it was either a '68 or a '69 Stingray 427, uh, which was an awesome car. I mean, it was just it was just so goddamn fast and uh, beautiful red color. I think it was the black interior, uh, it's side pipes, it's just an absolutely gorgeous car. And again, the, there's pictures somewhere, I don't have any pictures, but um, my stepmom probably has pictures somewhere that I've got to get those pictures. So, but from there, it, 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 the, the actual showing of the cars actually got kind of old. Um, it, it, they're long days when you show the cars, there was... There was like politics when it came to the different Corvette clubs that were putting on the different shows and it was, you know, it was a good time with friends and stuff, but um, it, it was a lot of work. And plus, Dad liked to, to drive his cars. 
you like to enjoy them. And when you're, you're trying to keep something in show condition, it's really, really difficult to, you know, to, to be able to just, to, just to, to just drive it and enjoy it. So what he ended up doing was from there he went to a 92 Corvette convertible. Uh, I think I think this was a blue one. I'm not sure. I think it was blue, but I'm not sure with that one. That was a 1992, and then he swapped up to a uh, a 2004. 2004 was the last Corvette uh, that he owned. Actually, a 2004 uh, convertible, a red one, and that one I do have pictures of, and I will put uh, in the video, uh, probably right here. So. Um, that was a fun car. They drove a lot in that one. They had a lot of uh, a lot of good times in that one. Uh, but uh, but unfortunately, a few years ago, he had a small stroke and uh, wasn't able to drive anymore. So he got rid of that, and um, and he actually uh, passed away last November. But uh, you know, he had some really great cars and had some fun with them. And uh, and that you know, that's all you can ask for um, in your life. So. That's pretty much where my passion for cars came from. I thank my dad, and I have, you know, quite a few of my friends are also have have a, a passion for cars, and quite a few of my other family members do as well. So um, it's definitely in the family, and uh, and I'm gonna keep it there. So that's it for this um, episode of of me and the GTI, and my history of. Um, sports cars and where I get my passion from so uh, you know thanks for watching subscribe if you can uh, stay tuned and uh, again thanks for watching see ya